So you think Africa needs industrial revolution? It does. But before industrial revolution, you need a mental revolution. Without a mental revolution, you can't drive an industrial revolution. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would it be? It would be changing, seeking to change their belief system. Building confidence in themselves because it is that which is going to change their attitude. So that they see themselves as people equal to other people. Our, if there is any weakness in us, it is not because we are black. That I refuse. Color is only skin deep or even less than skin deep. So that is not a problem. The problem is here. It is in the mind. When you, you perceive yourself as inferior, you will act accordingly. So that would be the first thing. Build confidence in the people. Know your history, the things that our people achieved. Some people don't know uh, much about Africa, the discoveries that were made in Africa. If perhaps they access to those they got to know, it will give them inspiration, motivation, and build their shattered egos. In our schools, we are not teaching that. We are still perpetuating this colonial education which sees Africans as having achieved next to nothing. We had an insightful conversation yesterday. Yeah. But there's one thing you never told me about yourself, who you are, and what you really represent. Uh, I'm Patisa Nyati. Patisa Nyati is a historical name, historical in the sense that uh, in our culture you don't just pick up a name from a basket with very little meaning. In our culture, names have a meaning, they have a context, uh, sometimes they carry wishes, they carry prayers. In my case, uh, Patissa <clears throat> meant we are just following others. We are not very certain if this venture is going to succeed. What venture was that? My mother used to be scared. So they come to a point where they no longer were certain they were going to have children with my father. That's the origin. So I see a party, Sanji Abai. I see a hamba, but not very sure if uh, this child is going to survive. But today I'm celebrating 70 years being a resident on planet Earth. Um, so it means the child survived where others failed to make it. We are right now, this is Makokoba, it's the oldest African township in Bulawayo, built in 1894 and uh, was the only one for a long time until 1945, then the second one, which is Mziligaz township, was the second to be built. So I love history, I love culture, I love performing arts, but more importantly is to understand African thought, African cosmology, African beliefs and African philosophy. We are not Africans because we, we live on the African continent. No, are we Africans because we are black. Mm. No, no, there is, it's all about the world view. Mm. It's about the way we relate to each other as human beings, one, how we relate to environment, and that environment is terrestrial, but it is also cosmic. How important is African spirituality to Africans? It is very important because it is the one that has power of healing. It has the power of seeing the future. You know your past and it sort of uh, uh, preserves our heritage. Mm. Those people who are spirit mediums are the people who understand our, our past through mediumship is about communicating, mm. communicating the past to the present so that we take our culture, our language, our practices, our beliefs 
to the future and that way maintain our identity. That's critically important. We are losing it now because our spirituality was attacked. Because it was deemed pagan, uh, it was de uh, uh, devilish, demonic, denigrated, despised, and then we lost it. You remember the question was, where did we lose it? <laughs> yeah. When we lost that sense of spirituality, we lost it altogether. Right, and that was our anchor in terms of our past, in terms of our world view, in terms of our cultural practices, and especially identifying that which underpins our culture. It is not enough to document cultural practices. Mm. Equally important, if not more important, is to identify what informs those cultural practices. And sometimes I note we fall short, we concentrate on dancing, but we don't see beyond the dance its expressions, the symbolism that is inherent in a dance. That we seem to be missing. If Africans living in Africa has lost their identity, how much more than Africans living in the diaspora? Africans that were taken from Africa to the diaspora. I mean, if we have lost it, how about them? It's worse. It's worse because they, uh, they, they've sunk, they are submerged, they are sinking. For them, it, even the small child who grows up will not speak the, their indigenous language. Out in Britain, they, they will not speak that language. And yet, losing a language is not just losing a medium of communication. You are losing the culture. Language is, yes, one for, trans, for communication, but equally important, it is, it is uh, trans, transmitting our culture. And it is a reservoir for our culture. Mm. That's, that's what matters. Mm. So when we look at a word, it is expressive, expressive of culture. Mm. Very important. So fulfilling two very important roles. Mm. One is communication. So like we are communicating, it's through right? language. Yeah. But when you look at the English language, it carries English culture. Doesn't carry your, your culture. No, it will not. It will not. Do you think Africans living in the diaspora should return back home? I'm talking about those who went through slavery. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's time for them to return back to the motherland? Perhaps some, I think they would have to be given a choice. There are some who have sort of acculturated out there where they are. Mm. There are others who may come back, but let's give them a choice. There is one thing that we might stand to benefit uh, in terms of the knowledge that they have, certain culture, certain ethos, attitude towards work, mm. they could, management, mm. they could help us mm. and, and uplift because we need a better understanding of these issues uh, to manage change, but allowing our African uh, issues to form the foundation. That's what matters, the foundation. You can't build a strong house on a weak foundation. foundation. Yeah. So let's. African culture has always been um, at accepting, incorporating new things, but building them on a solid African foundation. But now we want to build everything from scratch, foundation foreign, the superstructure foreign. Then there is things begin to fall apart. Things are really falling apart yeah. in Africa which means that Africa got a problem. Africa is a problem. There's no doubt about that. It's because Africa assumed independence was the end. My view is independence should have been the beginning, where you take stock of what did colonization do, do to us? What did slavery do to us? Taking time, not in a hurry, and then come up with strategies to reverse colonialism. Otherwise, independence just allows perpetuation of colonial relations. It's not about uh, color. A black man can be as oppressive, running an oppressive system. We should have said, how did they oppress us? How do we reverse oppression? How do we reverse repression? Right from slavery through to colonization 
it was not going to be an easy task, but that task was not undertaken. So we continue with colonial relations, but now being driven by the black men. And I remember saying, what we got is the right to drive a train. But the train that we are driving is not our train. We need to be drivers, but drivers of our own train. That's what is missing. What do you think is the harm that has been caused by colonization? One is to make us lose confidence in ourselves. Without confidence, you will not tackle much because you have dismissed yourself, when you meet some small challenge, right now, look at COVID, how we were looking at COVID. African countries generally did not come up with uh, any solution, any remedies. It is because they've lost the confidence in themselves. They are looking up to India, looking up to China, the, the, the uh, Russia, Britain, Americas. But in the past, there is a book which I'm doing on the impact of COVID-19 on African culture. They had their own remedies, symbolically dealing with a pandemic. COVID-19 is not the first pandemic to hit Africa, but it hits Africa at a time when Africans look elsewhere for solutions. That is a disaster for Africans, but it's not restricted to COVID-19. So it means all challenges we are weak. We say, ah, they will solve. We just fold our arms. They will help us. That, yes, at a cost. Medication, even when it is diabetes, insulin is not manufactured in Zimbabwe, nor is it manufactured in Ghana. You don't manufacture it in Nigeria. So we become a market, a very good market. Yes, we have our herbs if you look around, but you can't patent these herbs because their arrangement is that you patent only the commodity whose active ingredient you have identified and extracted. But we don't operate like that. We crush everything, the entire route, we drink that. But they say, no, come up with an active ingredient. Our knowledge doesn't allow for that. So they will patent all these medicines and then we'll be buying them from them. You see, that's, that's the danger. So you think Africa needs industrial revolution? It does. But before industrial revolution, you need a mental revolution. Without a mental revolution, you can't drive an industrial revolution. We should be clear about what starts. It's here. Uh, not decolonizing the mind yes. first. Because it's the mind that, that does. When I say we, we have an inferiority complex, it's the mind which says so-and-so is more superior, we are more inferior. It's all in the mind and you believe it. If you believe it, we act as we believe. We do as we believe. Yeah, that's what happens. That's the tragedy of Africa. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would it be? It would be changing seeking to change their belief system, building confidence in themselves because it is that which is going to change their attitude so that they see themselves as people equal to other people. Our, if there is any weakness in us, it is not because we are black. That I refuse. Color is only skin deep or even less than skin deep. So that is not a problem. The problem is here. It is in the mind. When you, you perceive yourself as inferior, you will act accordingly. So that would be the first thing. Build confidence in the people. Know your history, the things that our people achieved. Some people don't know uh, much about Africa, the discoveries that were made in Africa. If perhaps they access to those they got to know, it will give them inspiration, motivation, and build their shattered equals. Give us a brief of um, discoveries in Africa that you think Africans don't know. Africans were, if you look, all came here, Africa. Pythagoras, school children know about Pythagoras theorem. Didn't the, Pythagoras is a man, remember. He came to Africa to learn. 
when they were building pyramids, and he came to learn about that. All those things, measurement, and from our language, it's in the valley. You can clearly see they were in Uganda. They they know this is where it started. The measurement, this, the forearm was a unit of measure. Mathematics here in Africa, but the Africans don't know that. To a point, they won't even accept it now. That all those things started here in Africa. I had an American friend, an ambassador, who said, and we used to agree, I took him around this uh, uh, marketplace. How did Africa, how were Africans stupefied? Hmm. That was the question. And I think I answered that question. We were stupefied. When you look at the science that was here, before other people came to colonize us, before they came to enslave us, it all started in Africa. Everybody seems to agree that Africa is the cradle of humanity. Yeah. So before people went out of Africa, they were not going there as tabula rasa. They were carrying knowledge and built upon that knowledge, African knowledge. But that is not well known in our schools. We are not teaching that. We are still perpetuating this colonial education which sees Africans as having achieved next to nothing. So do you think there's a problem with our education system? Oh yeah, yeah, there is. Education system is a serious problem. Then you have a problem with newspapers. Newspapers are not projecting the African past sufficiently. That, that, that is a, weak, a weakness. Television. Television, perhaps in Nigeria, that's where I see a bit of Africa. I must admit, I've always said that West Africans are better in terms of expressing our African past. For example, you will see something like kind of a cloud, kind of a wave, and it hits some point. Yeah. But that's how Africa operates. Africa operates wirelessly. <laughs> the Western world discovered wireless in terms of communication only recently. We have always been doing it. You look at our uh, genetics. Yeah. We have been looking at genetics for a long time. When you, you, your footprint is there, I get it. I've got you. This is African science. I mean, like, there's a lot I think he has to share with all of us, and I believe that we can do this for Prof. He has a YouTube channel. I'm going to put the link in the description. You know how we do it, it by force, because I think he has a lot to share to the world. Mm. And since I'm here, let's do this together, Prof. How many subscribers do you have on the channel? I, I don't know. You don't Many. know? Yeah, Many. if you open YouTube, you find lots of them. Oh, yeah, lots so he has a lot of videos yeah. out there. And let's do this together. Let's all rush there in our numbers. Let's go learn a lot from Prof. Go there and tell Prof that Wadamaya brought me here. Prof, you, you also have books, right? Oh, yes. Where can 63 we, books. Where can we get the books? Are they on Amazon or anything like that? Because no. I have an online audience where they would love to buy from you. I think that's what we are working on right now, so that they are available on Amazon. But some of them are, are on APC, uh, Africa Book Collective. Mm. Yeah, mm. I have some there. Okay. So there are lots of them, and it's all about this liberation Asian. of Africa um, moving beyond to get Africa liberated in the true sense of the word. What do you think will happen if Africans get liberated? When you have a pandemic, they will be looking at it. They are motivated. They want to develop pharmacies. They want to be providers of health facilities. They, they are charting their own history. That's important. No. They chart their own form of government. You can't have all these things being dictated to you under the guise of democracy. What democracy? Prof, are you trying to say that when African leaders go for African Union meeting, they don't talk about these things? No, they do. But what testifies to that is not opening your mouth and uttering words. No, let us see action. Action beyond words. That's what we need. What do you think of the African Union? 
the African Union is there, but when you look at it, it's not completely effective. Yes, especially when it came to decolonization. You remember Ken and Bita, they supported the, the struggle in Southern Africa. Excellent. But they need now to go beyond. For example, I'll show you, I, I've been there. I looked at the AU headquarters. The architecture that is there, beautiful. But who built it? Not the African, it's the Chinese. Here in Zimbabwe, our parliament has been constructed, it's complete, true to our African architecture. But the African architecture, they now despise because they don't understand that architecture has got nothing to do with materials. Your house uh, doesn't have to be an African house because it is using wood and grass and clay. No, it's the design that matters. Our African architecture is about design. And the Chinese, uh, the Victoria Falls International Airport, very modern, use very modern material, but how do you design the, the architecture, the, the house? They, they are, they, they, it's excellent. You go into our new parliament at Mount Hampton, then you see what I'm talking about. Because for us, things are round. As above, so below we copy the universal de design. So we want that design down here. That's what we do. So when we sit, we sit in a circle, drinking beer, passing the calabash in a circle. That's what we do. We didn't invent the circle. The, the circle already exists up there. We looked at the sun, we looked at the moon. We saw they were a perfect, perfect expressions of secularity. But I, I mean, do you think it's right for an African Union building where decisions are being made for the mm -hmm. continent built by someone else, not Africans? That's why we have a problem. Why <laughs> do you think we're short of money? It's not about money, it's about priorities. <laughs> but at least for me, I'm happier when it's done. But we, do we have to be reminded by the Chinese? that we need to go back to our culture. The culture that we had before colonization. But now, a progressive man, one who is rich, is, uh, ev is evidence is a hut, a house that has a rectangle, and asbestos sheets, and not anything near our original architecture. Material doesn't matter. We can use the most modern of materials, but it's the design that is African and it is the design of cosmic bodies. We didn't invent it, no. Do you think we need a borderless Africa? It might help, but you need to be tactful. You may have, you, they may send you to heaven before you have succeeded. Because Africa has resources and they want those resources. So you try, where is Gaddafi? The moment you try to make Africa wiser, you will go. Right now you can see what is happening within BRICS. BRICS are trying to come up with money, a currency that is supported by resources. And if they do succeed, it will mean we are going to end up with a currency that is stronger than the Green Park, the American. So that is the, uh, the situation. Uh, so, but that's what we want. We should get there. But no, you may be eliminated. Where is Kwame Nkrum? You should be clear about this. You should be clear. Who was the driver? The hand that kills those, these people. Maybe the black hand like yours. But see the hand that is holding your hand. The third hand. This is where we fall short. Then we say, ah, he was killed. Yes, by his own people, but working at the instigation of those who have economic interests. It's not political interests. Poli politics holds the key to open the chest where there is money. What do you want people to remember you for? Maybe people in general like us, and maybe your 
your children, your grandchildren, uh, what do you want them to remember you for? Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, a, it's deriving joy out of your being. That, 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 that's, that's important. Self-respecting, holding ideas that you can defend. It's very important that you understand yourself from your own perspectives. As a people, self-respecting with confidence in themselves, not as a people who refer to others for authentication. We are not here to be authenticated. That's important for me. That here was a man who refused authentication. That other people are cleverer than others. On account of ethnicity, on account of race. That I don't believe. I will never believe. I've said, I do not subscribe to a God who allocates stupidity to a particular people on the basis of ethnicity or race. I don't believe that. But now, you look at our Africans, they, they, they don't see themselves as a center. They see themselves as a periphery. They see themselves in reference to other people. High corner. Who, 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 who appointed other people? and not us to be the reference point. So what we want, what I would want to be remembered for is, he refused. He refused until he went back. I think one thing that perhaps they will have to remember, forced to remember me for is, I've written lots of books and I do not think uh, I, I'm over and done with that. Uh, you never know. Yet at 70, that's when life begins. And, and the mind is very mature. You understand the world in a different way. Um, and so there may still be more revelations, more maturing process, so that by the time I, I depart, fly off to somewhere else in a better place, where we are told the angels will be kissing us day and night, <laughs> which is not a bad idea at all. Um, and then, yeah, they will say, ah, he went, he has gone, but something must remain. Mm. I think that's the measure of a man. What is it that remains when you are gone? What has, go what has gone is your soul. The soul goes somewhere, but... In terms of life on earth, what is it that you have left behind? The legacy, the heritage. Have you been uh, perhaps a cumbersome somebody, a burden on earth, or you tried to remove some of the burdens from Mother Earth, improved your community, improved the understanding uh, of the people in your particular area, or you came, you saw, you were departed, and left. Your final message to Africans watching us right now. Africans, let us not be shy of being Africans. It is not a mistake that we became Africans. It is not a mistake to be black. It is only skin deep and it's meant to protect us from uh, ultraviolet radiation, uh, etc., and other harmful radiation from the sun. We are just like any other people, but we need to reclaim our pride and become the Africa which was we had unpolluted by invasion. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. And like I said, check out the link in the description. Prof's YouTube channel link will be there. Make sure you subscribe and be part of the family as you all will learn a lot from him. My name is Wadamaya, your one and only annoying village boy right here in Makokuba. 
See you all in the next one. I am Maya. Peace out. Africa to the world. Oh